that question uh, with regard to the representation and the role of representation of courts uh, in matters of asylum. You said that they, in reality, do not have an impact, so to say. Why would you say that? Why do the provincial courts uh, reluctantly uh, decide on cases uh, and uh, make breakthroughs in the matters of asylum? Why do you think that happens? Thank you very much for, for the question. Um, Essentially, I would say that, uh, that the biggest problem is that uh, uh, the individual cases uh, does not arrive to the constitutional court because uh, most of the asylum seekers uh, don't stop in these uh, uh, countries and they, they tend to, to use more uh, the, the procedures of the European Court of, of Human Rights because they have a, a more extensive uh, um, um, case law than all the national constitutional courts. So maybe they they don't really trust uh, the, the constitutional courts or, or they just don't, don't want to uh, use all the court procedures and then move away and, and start a new life in one of the, the Western countries. Uh, in Hungary, we had uh, some individual cases uh, to in front of the constitutional court that um, they, and this can be the other uh, answer, they, they lacked of, um, uh, how should I say, we, we are quite strict how um, we, we choose the cases uh, to decide on, on merits and, and most of uh, these cases lack some, some basic um, uh, elements. Uh, this can be uh, another um, answer that the constitutional courts has just done that the, these cases um, <coughs> in front of uh, them. But I think in, in the future, if, if the constitutional courts want to, to protect um, the purpose of, of being the, the last instance and decide on, on, on the merit of fundamental rights and, and protect the, the um, the law, the national uh, law and, and their uh, position, then they also need to uh, have these kind of uh, cases too. You mentioned the positive implications of the migrations, for example, for the economy, for the employment relationships and so on. But I want to know what is your opinion if the positive implications are greater than the negative ones, for example, social dumping, exploitation, um, the positions on the all, only on the uh, lower paid jobs and so on. So, what do you think? Is it uh, greater than positive implications or the negative ones? First of all, uh, a lot of uh, a lot will depend on the idiosyncrasy of a given migration. So, like different migrations are different, and um, um, the, the people who are coming in. Um, um, they uh, have different characteristics. They make different characteristics in terms of their culture, in terms of uh, their human capital, uh, etc. So it's difficult to generalize. Uh, a lot will depend on uh, on uh, on the characteristics of a given migration. So that's the one thing. Uh, the other thing is that uh, if uh, people coming in uh, are um, of, are often taking, uh, let's say. Um, Mm, the, mm, after the, like within the same hierarchy, within, within the labor market, they, they, they often take uh, uh, roles uh, on the let's say, bottom of this hierarchy. Uh, this, in some situations, change may, may change or not. So if you, if you see uh, certain migrations into the United States, uh, in, in, some, in some situations uh, or types of groups that came in, you could see that uh, in the first generation they would uh, uh, occupy, let's say, uh, a lower uh, place in this hierarchy of, of labor, but their children, grandchildren would advance, some point uh, advance uh, uh, quite quickly. So like, a difficult situation of people who move in may, may change for their parents, for their children who, are, who grow up in this culture, who have access to them, it's, uh, and, and they may uh, advance. But this will, this may, this may be the depend on the group of migrants. What are the characteristics of the groups of migrants? Because some of the migrants, in, in case of some of the groups, it happens like this, but not necessarily to all of them to the same degree. Um, and uh, <laughs> so uh, this, this is this, this is a uh, this is a complex problem. So um, uh, the, the like a given migration should be seen 
as a individual phenomena that has characteristics of its own, as the people who are coming in, they are unique with their unique characteristics, and then the consequences for the receiving state will also depend on the characteristics of people who are uh, coming in on the one hand, and on the other one hand, how the state is handling this uh, migration, and is, how was the, was, is, is there a policy? Is this policy coherent? Is this uh, policy comprehensive? <coughs> is this policy uh, effective? Uh, so there are a lot of buts and however uh, to that. So uh, I'm not, I, this is as best as I can do with that question. Uh, if I may, I would just like to share my thought about uh, the change of possible change of attitudes towards uh, workers in Central Europe. To my mind, um, this change is possible. Why would be possible if there would be like a long term economic success here? But then if if uh, standards wages. Uh, will rise in Central European countries and then uh, also, also in London, then uh, this is going to translate to even the behavior of uh, Central European workers, like said, and people present in Western Europe, and then over time with a huge lag that will probably change cultural perception. But when these countries need to get rich uh, in order for uh, this perception to change, in my opinion, and without it, uh, I don't think they are this, this, this will happen. And the reason that I show uh, exactly that is a perception of the workers. I mean, that is not a perception of, for example, trade unions or the employers or so on. But I uh, mentioned that that is not the whole research that I did. Because in the research, I uh, focused on the 50% of higher educated people and 50% of the lower educated people. So that's why I wanted to uh, have the, the um, objective side, not only for, from the lower educated people, because it can usually result into a little bit um, different, different research results, because they are usually um, lower paid uh, workers, they are working on the jobs that are not desirable for the domestic workers and so on. So I actually watched out on that kind of uh, situation, so those results that I actually showed that those are perceptions not only from the uh, from the lower paid uh, jobs, but also from, uh, for example, I had engineers, uh, I had IT guys and so on, so it's not only from the, from cleaners, of, as you mentioned. Numbers. How many respondents uh, are in the poll? And my comment regards this is that these were just Croatian people living in Germany. Mm -hmm. So my comment is that um, I think many times we see, perceive each other as less valuable in these Western countries, but it's not necessary, the truth. And I think it would be interesting also to see the other hand, the employers, the Western employers, and how they in reality see, because we may think that we are less valuable, but it's not necessarily true. I uh, created the research questions with the help of a professor from Edinburgh, and we were very careful when we were creating the questions, because we didn't want to um, push the employers to not answer the polls. However, they saw the, um, the poll and they didn't want to answer. Um, I said that, for example, for, for 50 uh, employers in Germany that are hiring the Croatian workers and none of them didn't want to mm -hmm. respond. So what is actually the reason why would they respond if everything is okay? One question is, okay, if everything is wonderful, if they are treated well, then why wouldn't you answer the poll? Why is it? So, problematic. So, yes, I wanted to include the employers, but it is basically a mission impossible.